Hello and welcome to Wine Barons. This is this is episode five, and we're going to be continuing with our work on the on the pallet factory and concentrating mainly on starting to get some wood. Well, the first job is going to keep, get some uh, wood from some from trees into the into the sawmill so that we can get that producing once we've got that producing and we can produce the um, sh short planks, long planks and wooden beams we can start getting the pallet production going but first of all we've got to get some trees we need something to cut the trees down now I'm going to lease this John Deere cuts down, well cuts down a tree at a time but can carry two trees and you can carry them upright so quite good for rough terrain the vehicle has got a large wheel so it seems to handle the well I presume it's going to and I hope it's going to handle the the terrain quite well we're also going to get the bag handler to help uh, Help lip or well, drag the trees into the sawmill. You'll see in a little while that we will need to do that. And of course, we've got ourselves a big weight as well to put on the back of the of the tractor. So let's get that all connected up, and we can mosey on down to the to the sawmill. There's that John Deere. It's a beast of a machine doesn't move very fast but doesn't have to so the trees um, will be initially cutting down will be the ones that are on the on the maps um, we'll just put them in whole we won't even try and trim off the off the branches I don't think that they will trim off um, like a normal planted tree or tree to be harvested if you want to call it that so we don't get as much wood out of them but uh, we should be able to get enough to keep going until we have our own forest planted and grown up we'll be doing that later on in the episode as well so hang around to watch that I hadn't done it for quite a while so there were was a little bit of a learning, learning curve again but in any event We'll leave that for a bit later. So I'm just going to park this off here so that it's ready when we bring the first lot of trees in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the trees down, carry them into here, drop them in the open space here and then drag them in with the tractor and the bag. Well, I don't know what you call it. The bag strapper, if you want to call it that. Here we go. Look at this beast. Articulated near the front, of course. So we're not going to get anywhere very fast with this. 11 miles an hour. Let's we'll just get it to the front and we'll go and cut down a couple of trees. We'll put it, well, I'll show you the basic procedure. Um, we'll need to cut down quite a few trees. We'll do most of it offline because it's just going to be the same thing over and over again. Right, so let's get this opened. The real problem with this area is that you can't really see what's happening, so it's not a very good place to show you an example of of this machine operating. But it's got a blade right near the bottom of the yellow attachment at the front. I'm going to drive that up to the tree sometimes you'll get I found well particularly with these trees here if I get too low it'll say it's too thick so I've learned to kind of just lift it slightly and then you've still got to find the sweet spot to get the tree cut so as we go along we'll it's probably become more proficient with that but as you as you will notice in the next couple of minutes um, I don't always get the 
angle right of attacking the tree or well, attacking of cutting the tree Whereas that one that one was quite quite easy uh, there will be stumps left in the ground and I've left them fairly high so that eventually when we come to clear this area we will be able to find them quite easily let's put it this way let's say that I'm hoping that I've left them quite well exposed yeah so for the foreseeable future most of the trees that we're going to be cutting down are going to be in this dense bushland if you want to call it that so it's not going to be particularly riveting viewing the actual cutting down now the problem with this sawmill is that it won't be so much of a problem once we working in the forest and we can cut down and put the cut the logs into decent lengths and trim them off and then put them into onto a trailer to bring in but for now it becomes a bit of a problem because these trees have very thick branches and they it would take an age just to trim them all off and put them in so I've just decided to put whoops there we go <laughs> So I'm trying to lean it forward so that it doesn't have to fall too far to the ground. Then I'm just going to release these trees. Boom, boom. And that's one of the reasons why I, well, I was going to try and claim, claim credit for me leaving so much space but, you know, around these buildings because I thought that this would happen. But it didn't, it was just a lucky coincidence, to be honest. Otherwise we would have had to do it outside in the road or something like that. And then drag them in from there. So now we'll just get this and the John Deere big bag lifter. And we'll go and connect it up to, whoops, what do we do? I think we pressed the wrong button somewhere. We weren't on the right equipment again. Right, so let's get this connected up. I don't know whether we'll be able to pick up two of these at once. Going to find out. Try and get to the front of, more of the front of the tree so that we can just drag it straight back in. It's not the easiest job in the world. Yeah, it's got both of them. So of course we're dragging these trees and they've got all sorts of other dynamics and branches catching on things and but we only have to just get a little bit of the of the tree into the trigger area. We'll drop that off there, get the tractor out. Then we can go and get that just move out so we don't cut up the saw too much. We don't damage the saw too much, let's put it that way. <coughs> right, there we go. Left click and that's in. So we've got about just under 5,000 litres of uh, trees in there that can get going so let's get the production started so we want to do planks long planks and wooden beams so I'm just going to continue feeding this we'll do we'll do another another lap just to show you just going to cut down a couple of trees from a different area. Let's get this parked up for now. Yes, yeah, so of course, the first lot of pellets that come out here will be going straight into the wine, to the winery. We'll get that filled up. And then there's quite good pricing for the, for the sale of pellets. I think this will pay itself I mean it's a very big investment but I think it'll pay it pay itself off quite quickly well that's what I'm hoping 
Right, let's just get this set up and then we'll head straight up through the bushes here and go and pick up some trees off directly ahead of us. So there's still quite a few ups and downs and uneven ground. But it's not that far to go particularly to start with. Right now this is where I'm having a bit of a problem. I can't seem to get it to attach to this tree. And I think it's got something to do with the angle. So we're coming up from a bit of a uphill. So I think what I'll do is I'll just give it one or two more tries. So it's still showing it is too thick. If I leave it up, I still can't get into the trigger area. Try and level it off a little bit more. And it's just it's going to be a bit of a frustration trying to get it into the exact spot but um, as we do more and more we will we will learn where the sweet spot is what I'm going to do is I think I, I think I think I should just go and try another tree and then come back to this one will come back from a different angle. It could be the angle of a angle of attack as such. Because we were on quite a pron pronounced well, wasn't that bad, but we were pretty much trying to cut uphill. I'm still struggling to get this one to attach. I hope these will cut. Yeah, there we got it. Right, let's go and see if we can get that other one. As you can see, they have left a, quite a bit of, bit of a stump. Uh, I don't think this is the one that we were trying the last time. But nevertheless, they will get cut. I'm not sure I want to cut all the trees around directly around the farm. Because I'm thinking of... Um, ahead of that little area there and perhaps putting some log cabins in there that um, we can get people to come and visit our operation our winery and farm spend some money in a pub that we have in the winery but that's a little bit down the line at the moment right now we've got to get productions done first so we'll get this in let's see if we So that's basically the operation, so we'll lower these down, get these into the sawmill and then we'll go and do, we'll go and cut a couple more trees down off camera and then we'll come back to you and plant a forest. Let's just get this sorted first, there we go, so that tips forward quite a bit. Uh, I should lower it down a bit, but I'm not sure whether. Yeah, there we go. I'm lowering it down fairly close to the ground just so that we can control a little bit more where it falls. That's reasonably good. Did think it was going to hit our fence. Right, let's get this out of the way and then we'll get the tractor on and go and drag those in. Lamborghini I did not expect to be doing this job to be honest <laughs> when I started this series but I'm quite happy that we are diversifying into the forestry the main objective of going into the forestry of course is to supply pallets to our winery but I've got a feeling that we're going to make just as much money from this forestry business as we are going to from the from the winery. Alright, let's drag that in. As you can see it. It isn't always easy because I think that tree is probably pushing against the other tree now. 
Yeah, it's rolled it completely out of the way, so maybe I should have got a little bit closer with the attachment. In any case, let's go and see it. It's a bit. It's a bit of a. It's a bit of a clumsy method, but um, it's a means to an end at this stage. I'm coming in at the wrong angle. Yeah, really struggling with this. Oops. But this overall will be the best um, sawmill eventually. We'll just try and might have to kind of ride up on these logs just to get it in. Just not quite in. I think it's a little bit into the. Oops! I can't go much further than that in there. Push it back out again, and. It's a little bit straighter now. Yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a learning curve, this whole forestry thing. I haven't done it for a while. Not since my um, Silver and Forest um, series. That seems a while ago now. But then I was using pretty big equipment. I think we will be leasing a lot of forestry equipment to start with because they are very very expensive. The small equipment we'll buy. Just don't want to leave the tractor in the trigger point. Right, let's get that sorted. That's it. So I won't put you through the pain of watching you me drag in all these other logs. What we'll do is we'll do that off camera. We did put in another two trees as well. We'll do some more later on off camera. So we won't send this back yet. We'll just park it off for now. Right now it's time to start planting a forest of our own. We'll just nip up to the farm. I was nipping up to the farm and I realised that I needed the tractor so I just stopped off quickly. We're going to go and lease a planter. So this is the only tractor pulled planter besides doing it by hand. I haven't used this. I don't know whether I've ever used it actually. I may have somewhere along the line for a short while. So it's a bit of a learning curve that. And we'll just pop on back down to the tractor, jump in there and we'll get back up to the farm, go and hook that up. And then we're going to reteach ourselves how to use the tree planter. I think maybe I should take this weight off the back. Where shall I drop it off? Uh, we might as well just drop it off next to the to the tree cutter to the John Deere. Yep, it's looking good. Boom. I think we cracked the cement there. <laughs> right, we're back at the farm. We're we'll going to get this all connected up. Get some saplings. As I say, it's been a while since I've used this machine, so I'm not quite sure how many it takes and how to load it. So just bear with me as I go through the operation of loading it up. Right, so going to pellets. We've only got the one lot of saplings. I think we'll plant pine, I think, to start with. I'm so out of touch with forestry that I can't remember the benefits of each of the 
different types of trees. We went into that in quite depth, quite a bit of depth in Silver Run Forest uh, series. But um, yes, yeah, nice, nice to be doing uh, forestry again. I don't often do it, but the um, the need for pellets and the and the pellet factory that. I'm dying to show you guys, probably be in the next episode. I really like it, it's, it's, it's really good, it's a, it's a mod that I'm sure I've told you that I've got on King Mods, works beautifully so far. I did test it a little bit beforehand, but um, yeah. Right, so if we put that on there, jump in. And it says load it, so it doesn't seem to load from directly from the floor. And it only takes 20 at a time. Now I thought that in the past that I'd put it, the other pallets kind of on the back, but uh, I can't seem to get them to lie flat on the back, so it just doesn't look right. Luckily we don't have to go too far, so I'll just pop back every time we need to refill. Just show you quickly. I think what I'll do is I'll try and see. Well, maybe it'll it shows as 100% full of 20, but maybe maybe not. Yeah, so I, I thought I'd had them stacked here, but as you can see it doesn't go go down flat. So uh, onto the actual. wonder if it's because I had it, I'm just looking at it now, I wonder if it's because I had it lying, uh, at least the, the trailer, the trailer down, or the, the planter down should I say, but yeah I can't seem to find it to, at this point to, to actually look like it's actually sitting on the trailer. We'll just see, see if it loads in or not, but I don't think it will. We'll just try quickly. As, as I said, it's not too much of a problem now because we're not too far away, so we can just, yeah, it doesn't, it only takes 20 at a time. Once we once we start planting further away, we will just put these onto a separate trailer and then just get them close to the action. It's not too much of a problem to just drive back and load them up. It's like anything else. Once you know how, you it becomes a lot quicker. This is taking me an age just to load these twenty, but we'll get we'll get better at that as we go along. Right, let's get going. So I'm not going to be doing much planning of the of the forest. I'm going to kind of plant it. They will plant in lines because of the planter, but I, my feeling is it's going to look a bit like a, a fan going out from the area that I want to plant. So we're going to plant on the on the left hand side, just as we get past this dense bushland. So we plant along, along here, and we'll we'll just go get ourselves into a bit of a line and then just go until the whole pellet is, is planted and then we'll plant each pellet starting more or less at the top here and just going straight into the field. So say I'm not going to worry about it being in some sort of uh, shape or anything. So as you can see every 
couple of meters sapling gets planted. The problem is you can't really see them too well in the grassland that we have here. And I don't really want to cut it down either. I want to leave it as natural as possible. But as they grow bigger, of course they will become far more prominent and we'll, we'll be able to see what the um, what it looks like overall once uh, they started growing up to some sort of size. So the plants at a reasonable rate, bigger than digging holes and planting by hand. It doesn't seem to worry too much about the angle of its planting. That was a minor worry for me. I didn't think it would be a problem. But it makes good use of these undulations. We can plant we can use it for forest land. I don't think we're gonna need all the land that we have put into forest, so we might we might have to do a bit more conversion of land as we go along just to try and utilize the land for something or other. I haven't given it much thought. Well there we go, twenty planted. I'm just going to speed it up a little bit, just to double speed, just to get through the operation. We'll head up back to the farm, go and load up again. And yeah, we will uh, see you once it's all done. Right, so as you can see, much easier loading this time round. There we go. Head off back down to the planting area. So this was one of the problems that I found is that uh, I couldn't really see where the where the trees were just to try and space it out a bit. So you know there's one there, and that's when I decided we actually park, parked on one. So I just thought we'll. We don't need to have, we've got so much land, we don't need to have them one on top of the uh, of each other. So giving myself a little bit of a gap and then just get the planting done again. So I have 80 saplings bought already, they all pine, so we'll get those all planted out, so we'll have 80 trees planted and then we'll do, we'll do a few pellets every now and again just to stagger out the, the um, growth period so that we've got a continuous supply of wood. I'm really not sure how much we're going to need. So we'll start with 80. Consider buying maybe maybe put a hundred in. I don't know, we'll see. We'll just see how we go. So that's 40 planted. Get another 20 loaded up and we'll go and plant those.
Yeah. It's a bit of a trek up here, but it's, it's not too far away. As, uh, as we get further away from the farm, we'll put those onto a trailer and take them with us. I don't know whether this has got a trailer hitch on it. It's probably not. We'll work something out. That's so not too much of a problem. You can use a small tractor with a trailer. It's not hundreds of miles that we have to go around. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to see how this actually ends up being planted. It's probably going to be quite funny. So I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this map. I'm enjoying the undulations and the challenges. don't know whether I've said it before, but yeah. I don't think it's a often used map, certainly not in in series, in uh, let's plays, so I'm hoping it's a little bit different. Pretty interesting. Right, so that's 60 done. Come get this last batch organised, then I'll decide whether I'm going to do another 20 or not. So the first job we're going to have next month in May is to cut the grass, get some income from that big grass field. It's going to be a while still before the grapes are ready. The biggest problem with this series of course is that both crops that we are working with uh, take quite a while to, the trees in particular, to mature to harvest size. But yeah, it's not too much of a problem. Our main focus focus is still the the wine, but we can have to do other things to keep income coming in in the meantime. As we have already done, we can't have to buy grapes to start with. We may even end up having to buy in wood before our first forest. Is ready because I don't know, don't know what sort of uh, levels of uh, production and how many pellets we're going to get. And we've got it. Besides filling up our own requirements at the at the winery, also going to need to try and get income from it as quickly as possible. So we'll have a look and see whether we can buy any wood from anybody. Not sure, but uh, not worried about that yet. So we'll be able to thin out the trees that we have. As I said, I don't want to cut them all down. But to thin out the trees that we have on the farm at the moment. Just to um, get going, to get started. Yeah, so I think I am going to get another 20 saplings. But I think this time we'll get something slightly different. I think we will get the stone pine. Because somewhere in the back of my mind that was a good producer in terms of the amount of wood that you could get from it. Let's get that loaded up and go and plant that and that'll be that job done. That'll be a Hundred tree forest. Yeah, so looking forward to seeing those grow. Off we go, let's get these planted and then we must probably just about at the end of the episode 
just one little job that I want to do after that but I'll show you that when we get there Should be about right it's going to be <laughs> uh, really going to be interesting to see how this looks out because i've kind of just given up trying to have some sort of order to the whole thing wouldn't have been too difficult to do but then i thought no let's uh, let's have a forest that hopefully is not going to look too structured it's going to look look a bit structured because it we're planting in straight lines but I'm hoping that the different angles that we're planting at or that I haven't just naturally got the right angle every time I doubt it <laughs> there we go I think that's it done yep 100 tree forest planted. Now we just got to wait for it to grow. Right, let's just get back up to the to the sawmill pallet factory. Now we have bought quite a few bits of equipment. So I'm going to put up a shed of tobacco to keep them under cover. We do have a um, the pieces of a shed from uh, from when we took over the farm, so I'm just going to reconstruct that. So it's going to look a little bit out of place. It's a bit more rustic than the factory area here, as you can see there. But it's all complete, so it doesn't. Uh, it's not going to cost us a fortune. We have a it's still watertight the roof, of course. If the rain comes in the sides, not much we can do, but just try and get it in this corner, still leaving us enough space to drive around. Yes, yeah, I mean it's only going to cost nine thousand euros to get that up. But to utilize what you have around, as I say. Oops, pressed the wrong button. <laughs> That's it, bolts. We'll concrete the inside in the next episode, or maybe off camera, just to make it look a bit more uniform. We had to dig up the con concrete of course to, to get this all sorted. Well, I might leave the just leave the ground texture there. It kind of breaks up the concreteness of the whole or the industrial line the industrial look of the whole operation softens it a bit maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Right, let's just get this all parked off. I think that's where we're going to end this episode. So thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the different actions that we've done, actions that we haven't really done before. Well, some of it we may have done in the Silver Run Forest, but I think we were using completely different equipment then. Don't know why I opened the door. We'll just leave the tractor parked up here for, for the time being. In the meantime, we'll go and cut down some more trees off camera, get some more trees into the, into the sawmill. And hopefully, hopefully in the next episode, uh, we will be able to get the pallet factory going. This will probably be the next episode after, or we might be able to get 
production out straight away. I think it's quite quick, the production. In any case, thank you so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.